I've been keen for a while to hear the results of this type of test that I'm going to do today. So I've got the Harley Benton um, DNA FX Guitar Pro, let me turn it on. And the really cool thing about this unit is, is it has two different type of outputs that you can use from it. One where it's got the guitar cap uh, IR simulator in there, which is very cool, and one direct through. So what I thought was, if you're using it live, now you've got more options. So you can take the uh, IR, third, third party IRs, or it's built in ones, whichever one you want, um, put them front of house so you get the best uh, quality sound there. And the other one you can send straight to your amp and um, have some stage sound. So, because not all venues uh, have the capacity to do either in-ears or bands might not have the capacity to do in-ears. Um, or there's always, not always, but more than not there are problems live where you've got to think on the fly and try to sort stuff out so the show can go on. And so that's what I'm kind of thinking about for this video. So I'm going to do, let's, let's go through this first. Uh, if we go no, to the menu and we go to output mode, you'll see if it goes out the left, it's going to go straight through. So on that one, I'm going to put it through my Harley Benton GPA with my Harley Benton 2x12 uh, cabinet mic'd up with my SM57. Sounds like I'm sponsored and endorsed by them. I am not. There's three things I'm using that happen to be the same brand. Um, and the other one, we're going to go direct into um, my mixing console so we can hear the, the IR effects and, and compare them. And then what I thought is sometimes with fallback, you don't have a chance to actually get fallback. So you've got to hear what's on stage. So I'm going to do three different type of setups. So we're going to do, as I said, direct. Uh, then we're going to do a bypass where it goes into my Harley Benton 2x12. And then I'm going to do a room mic as well. Now the room mic's going to sound the worst, so we're not listening to that for quality. We're setting it up to emulate if you're playing live. So if you're live, that's what the stage sound would be. So you've pretty much got um, your front of house if you're using IR, front of house if you're micing up a cab, and uh, on stage if at any point there's no fallbacks or just to get that feel um, in the room, so to speak. Or, you know, maybe for a drummer, because drummers don't hear exactly what it sounds like. They're, they're the in-room sound is what we're going to go for. All right, so let's set stuff up and let's listen to at least the first two, and then I'll do a jam with all three. All right, now everything's set up for the first part. Grab my Onsby guitar, tuned to drop G, which is lots of fun. Having a very bad stuttering day today, so bear with me if I start to stumble a bit vocally. So what I've got this set up at the moment is this is going directly into uh, my mixer. So the equivalent of, think about it, if this was going straight to front of house, if you're playing live. So this is what you'll hear, uh, or this is what the audience will hear uh, live. So I've got the third party IR cabinet um, engaged at the moment. So that's what it sounds like. So for example, if we go here. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna have both of them set up soon, but if we were to turn off the IR calves now, I'll just give you an example. Uh, through. <laughs> Sounds like rubbish. Probably peaking like crazy too. But yeah, that is just. It doesn't have the cabinet there to do that, what I call like a final polish on the sound to make it sound dynamic and beautiful and nice and warm. Um, so we turn that back. So that's an example of how this could be utilized to go front of house. Um, so now what we'll do is, bear with me, I am going to mute that one, get the microphone happening, plug this in here, into the other output, so this is gonna be the left one, 
So this one's going through, so there's no um, IR happening at all. And what we're going to hear is, yep. So now it's going to come out of my Harley Benton speaker down there. What I'm going to do is turn off the monitoring on here because that is uh, confusing. I don't want to hear that in behind me. I want to hear it coming just out of the speaker there. So if you wanted to, if you want to go for a, a more different way of approaching it, I don't know if it's old school or um, just an alternative way of, of, of doing it if you have this unit, is yeah, just go straight into uh, either your amp effects loop or if you had like a, a, a stage amp type of thing like this um, Harley Benton guitar amp, nice and dry. And use your own cab with your own speakers. That sounds that sounds really solid. I'm extremely surprised by that. I shouldn't be, but I am because I've never really tried this before uh, with this type of setup with um, the DNA here. That is. Whoa. Um, let's, yeah, I've got the noise gate set pretty hard, so. Any touch uh, breaks through that threshold, it does burst. So for science, this is what it sounds like if the cab is on uh, for this. You lose a lot of volume, but also you lose a lot of, um, well, definitely rawness, but it, it makes it too oversaturated with wetness, if that makes sense. I think that's the best way I can describe how the sound is. compared to having it through and just letting the one cab happen instead of a cab going into a cab. Which I feel is much better. So now, um, now I need to create a scenario. Well, this is all creating a scenario. So we've got this, let's say, uh, live, you, um, there's no fallbacks. So fallbacks are little uh, uh, like monitoring speakers you have at the front of the stage so you can hear yourself actually playing. Because a lot of small venues sometimes don't have them, sometimes they're not working, sometimes the sound engineer is new to the venue and just doesn't know how it's all wired and put together. Um, Oh, like what happened to me one time when I was doing sound, um, they had a separate amp for on stage compared to front of house, and no one told me where that amp was, so I couldn't figure out on how to power them up to get them happening. Uh, thankfully, the bands were very um, uh, accommodating and understood the situation and still went on with the show, which is great. Um, in that case, they just had their amps to, to hear. And I've been in that situation playing live too, where I could only hear on stage sound, nothing coming back at me. So if that is a stage, or if you're in a rehearsal room, because you don't mic up your amps uh, in a rehearsal room. Uh, I'll set up another mic there. So if you were to play live, this is what you'll hear on stage. So it won't sound the best, but it'll give you an idea of how it sounds in the actual room. Because at the moment, I don't know how this sounds uh, with the SM57, because I haven't heard what I've captured yet. I've only heard what's in the room. So hopefully this, uh, I'll set up a nice condenser mic just a little bit further away over there uh, to emulate it. 
and hopefully this is going to work, um, and we're going to get the three different type of um, situations. So then you can assess to see how they all sound. So sit back, relax, enjoy the three different jams with the three different setups, and we'll have a chat about it on the other side. So there we have a quick rundown of the Harley Benton. Let's see if I can get that in. Probably not. Probably not going to focus. Um, DNA FX unit here, which is pretty rad. Uh, I love the third party IRs that you can put in here and how it kind of treats it. But more so on today's video is how we can utilize it differently in different situations for live. Because um, when you do smaller gigs and medium gigs, uh, even with big gigs, but more so homing in on those ones. Uh, shit goes wrong and you've got to sort it out or um, as I'm sure anyone that's played live knows when you travel around you have no idea what the venue is going to offer you you don't know if the foldbacks work if the front of house is decent if um, there's actually public cabling done and put through and you've got to work with whatever's there and even sometimes you don't have time for a sound check or a decent sound check and when you um, working with the sound engineer uh, and anyone else else there on the best head if you got even like shared back lines and all different type of complications that could pop up uh, it's really nice to know if you've got something like this you've got different options you can chuck it straight into even their effects unit uh the effects unit their um uh send and return on the back of their amp uh to run it dry if they're having a shared back line for example maybe you can still get a killer sound or um if there's no fallbacks, uh, at least you might be able to chuck it in someone's uh, back line there to be able to hear it on stage. And, and whatever the scenario is, whatever. There's lots of options. But definitely keen for your feed feedback. What did you think about it? How did you feel with it? Look, don't really judge the room one too much because we knew that wasn't going to be like, wow. But that's just a really good example of what it can sound like on stage. And uh, I haven't heard it back yet, but uh, hopefully it hears or reflects uh, a lot of what I'm hearing and experiencing in this room right here. Uh, because from my perspective, sitting here and listening to it, it sounds fucking awesome. I was very, very, uh, mostly impressed um, with it going straight through um, and bypassing uh, its cab section of the unit and just straight into my cab. Um, little bit of fuzz, but that's a vintage 30, because that's what speakers I have in there at the moment. That's kind of that characteristic. If I had the money, I'll definitely buy different speakers to try, which is one of my favourite things to um, to dream about. Um, I'd love to load it up with different speakers and see how they would sound and kind of home in more on my dream sound um, and dream tone. 
But with what I've got there with the vintage 30s, uh, yeah, it does have that little bit of a, of a fuzz to it. Um, it's not bad, it's just what it is. That's what they offer. So once again, thank you very much for joining me uh, in this video and in this conversation. I thoroughly look forward to chatting with you, uh, well, this time, or whatever, leave stuff in the comments, and next time. And until then, stay safe.